Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared and we're about to play Wingspan with the European Expansion. I'm only covering the changes to the game added by the expansion. So check out my teaching video for the full Wingspan base game. The link is in the description. As I go over everything, feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. Make sure to like and subscribe below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. Wingspan's first expansion is here and adds to the game a ton of elegant birds from Europe. These new bird cards bring new interesting powers to the game as well, including ones that focus on more player interaction. Adding the expansion is as easy as shuffling all the new bird cards together with the original deck of cards. As Stonemeyer prepares for more expansions, they've also included a new card storage tray for organizing everything. But that's not all. So let's dive in and take a look at everything that comes with the European expansion. As I said, the expansion adds lots of new bird cards to Wingspan. You'll get 81 new cards to add to your game. They are all compatible with the base game and should be combined with all of your other bird cards to be included. I'll show off a few that have some new abilities. If you've ever run out of eggs while playing Wingspan with five players, you'll be happy to know the expansion adds 15 more eggs, and they're all purple. In addition to eggs, you'll get 38 more food tokens. The chance of running out of food tokens is much lower now. For those who like replayability, you'll get five new double-sided gold tiles that can mix up the scoring methods in your games. Additionally, there are five new bonus cards that bring new in-game bonus points. For my solo gamer friends, you'll appreciate four new Atoma cards to also increase the abilities of the AI opponent. There's a brand new score pad which has multiplayer scoring on one side and solo scoring on the other. Now it's that much easier to keep track of the solo plays. There's an end-of-round reference tile included, a new custom storage tray, and of course, the expansion rulebook. First, shuffle all the expansion's bird cards with all the other bird cards. Then, shuffle all the new bonus cards together with the base games. The extra food tokens, eggs, and end-of-round gold tiles should be mixed in together in their respective piles. Place the new end-of-round reference tile near the goal mat. The green side of the goal mat is the recommended side to use. Some of the new goals aren't ideal for the blue goal side. That's all for setup. Many of the new bird powers have abilities that trigger at the end of each round. Because of this, remember to keep all your used action cubes in the row they were used that round. They will come into play with some of the new powers. The teal colored bird powers are the round end powers. After all players finish the final turns in the round, each player gets to activate each of their teal abilities in player turn order. When it's your turn to activate your round end powers, you can resolve them in any order. These abilities will never activate your once between turns pink powers. If the bird's cost shows an asterisk, that means they have an alternate cost described in the text on the card. For example, the Northern Goshawk has an alternative hunting cost. For each rodent in the cost, you may pay one bird card from your hand instead. These cards are tucked under the card. This counts as tucking a card and as a predator succeeding in a hunt, which can trigger some birds with pink powers. The red kite has an alternative hunting cost as well that can also trigger pink powers. When you play it, instead of paying its cost, you may play it on top of another bird on your player board. Any eggs on it must be discarded. The original card flips over and becomes a tucked card. There are 24 bird cards with new food powers. Some of the powers affect other players, such as the common nightingales. When activated, choose a food type. All players gain one of that food from the supply. There are some that are more devious, though. The black-headed gull steals one food of any type from an opponent's supply when activated. You get to keep it, but the opponent gains one food from the available dice in the bird feeder. One interesting food power comes from the black woodpecker. When it activates, you gain all the invertebrates in the bird feeder. If only one die face is showing at the time this triggers, 
you may reset the bird feeder once to try to get more invertebrates. There are some birds that really boost your ability to make a comeback. If you see an opponent doing a lot of actions in one habitat, you'll want to use one of these birds. The Eurasian Magpie gives you one food token per action cube any one opponent of your choice has used this round. The food you collect must be cached on any of your birds. The Dunnock also lets you choose an opponent and gain one egg per action cube that they have in their grassland habitat. The eggs must be placed on the Dunnock. If you need eggs quickly, you could use the Lesser Whitethroat or Black Red Start. At the end of the round, you can choose a habitat without any eggs, then gain one egg on each bird in that habitat. Likewise, the Red-Legged Partridge lays one egg on each bird in his column as he gets activated. There are many more food powers, but you can discover them on your own. One of my favorite new card drawing powers is found on three birds. When they activate, discard all remaining face-up bird cards and refill the tray. Then you can draw one of the new face-up cards. A very helpful bird early on might be the Great Crested Greb or the Wilson's Storm Petrel. When they activate, draw one bird card per empty card slot in its row. At the end of your turn, keep one of them and discard the rest. You'll be able to more effectively plan out a strategy and search for the card you need. There is one bird that helps everyone. Savvy's Warbler lets you draw two bird cards when activated. Then all other players draw one from the top of the deck. There's a few more I haven't discussed, but let's move on to the next set of new powers. The new flocking powers are all new ways to add tucked cards behind your birds. And as you know, tuck cards are points at the end of the game. There are two bird cards that are powerful enough to tuck bird cards under other birds in its habitat, even if they don't normally tuck cards. Each time the mute swan activates, choose one to three birds in the wetlands. Tuck one card from your hand under each. Then you can draw one card. Or how about the rough bird? At the end of the round, tuck up to three cards from your hand behind him. Then you can draw one card for each card you tucked. If you find yourself with a lot of food tokens you won't need, how about a way to convert them to points? Check out the Common Swift, House Sparrow, Common Starling, and Eurasian Collared Dove. At the end of the round, discard up to five food tokens from your supply. Then you can tuck one card from the deck for each food underneath them. These are great to have near the end of the game. I'll mention one more before moving on. The Snow Bunting has a once between turns ability that lets you tuck a card behind it when other players tuck a card for any reason. Then when their turn is over, you get to draw one new bird card. There are four new birds that get placed on your board sideways. They cover two habitat spaces but you only have to pay the egg cost of the lowest one. The next bird you would play is placed to the right of it, thereby helping you get bigger bonuses faster. If you want help earning end of round goals, how about the Eurasian Green Woodpecker, Greylag Goose, or Seti's Warbler? These each count double towards the end of round goal if it qualifies. However, it doesn't double the number of eggs. There are three birds that share this very interesting power to help you get birds out quickly. When activated, discard either an egg, a card, or a food token to immediately play another bird in the habitat matching what you discarded. There are about six bird cards that have when played powers that help you get new bonus cards and increase your resources at the same time. Before I get into the new bonus cards, some of the original ones are also affected by the new birds. For example, the Cartographer bonus card now includes the Eurasian, European, Corsican, and more birds. The Anatomist bonus card now includes back, leg, and toe for birds' body parts. The Photographer bonus card now includes birds with coal, gray, and honey in their names. There are two bonus cards specially used for solo play. Instead of randomly drawing a bonus card from the whole deck for the Atoma to use, choose one of these two to use. One is called the O-Twitcher, which lets the Atoma keep up to two birds worth three or four points. The second is the Rasp Life Fellow bonus card. This lets him keep the highest valued bird among birds worth five, six, or seven points. The five added bonus cards for multiplayer games includes the Citizen Scientist card, giving points for birds with tucked cards. The Bird Bander bonus gives points for birds that can live in multiple habitats. Contrastly, the Ethologist bonus card looks at a single habitat 
and gives two points for each color bird power in it. The Diet Specialist bonus awards points for birds with a food cost of three food. The Behaviorist bonus card scores by column. For each column that contains birds with three different power colors, you'll gain three points each. There are five new double-sided end-of-round goals to mix up your games. Let's take a look. This one scores based on the number of food tokens you've collected. This scores based on the number of bird cards in your hand. This one is based on the number of played birds worth over four points as printed on the card. This goal scores on the number of played birds with no eggs on them. This one scores against the most birds played in a single row, any of the habitats. This scores the most columns of filled bird spaces in all three habitats. This goal is based on the number of bird cards you've played with brown when activated power shown on them. This goal gives points to the player with the most played birds with either no power or just a win played power. This goal tile is based on the number of bird cards you've played that have at least one card tucked under them. This last one scores against the total food cost of all your played birds. I think overall this looks to be a very useful expansion for Wingspan fans. It looks like Stonemeyer really listened to their fans when it came to the kinds of things that we would want in a first expansion. Increasing all the resources and adding more variability with the goals and bonus cards is fantastic. Including a new tray and score pad is a nice touch, since players that play Wingspan a lot may be running low on the score pad sheets. The biggest change this expansion brings is certainly the wealth of new bird cards. Not only did they add more birds, they came up with all kinds of new bird powers that are greatly appreciated. I'm looking forward to playing Wingspan again soon with all these added features. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. Check the video description for links to Big Viking Maths, BoardGameGeek, Top Shelf Gamer, or Token Upgrades. SleepKings.com for a 10% off coupon on card sleeves, and Mr. Meeple t-shirts for cool board gaming shirts. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.